For best audio and video quality, Hi, I'm Vespers. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer located in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And I've had a lot of requests on my channel lately for how to mix the kick and the bass so that they're not muddy in a track and how to get tracks loud after the mastering process. So what we're going to cover in our tutorial today is a technique that's great for this using sidechaining compression called ducking. And in order to demonstrate this, I've got a track, just a, a basic draft track queued up here with some beats and a bass line. And the bass line's pretty heavy. It's got quite a bit of sub in it. And you'll hear it conflicting with the kick. So the first thing we're going to do is just preview the track we'll be working with. So we've just got some basic beats and some bass in there, and you can hear um, the elements, but we can definitely encourage them to be louder by using this technique called ducking. So ducking uses, like I said, Ableton's built-in sidechaining compressor. So we are going to go over to the Devices menu, and we are going to grab Ableton's compressor, which is under Audio Effects. We're going to take the compressor, and we're going to drop it onto our bass. In this case, our bass is coming from an instrument rack that I've created which is using a sub bass patch and a top bass patch, both of which are patches that I designed in Native Instruments Massive. So what we're gonna be doing is using the compressor and feeding the signal from our drums. And how we do that first is we start off by pressing this little arrow right here. This expands the side chaining area within our compressor. To activate side chaining, we need to press this button so it's active. Then we get to choose where the input signal comes from. In this case, we're going to go here, and we're going to choose the input signal of our beats track. Our beats in this case are coming from a drum rack, where I've designed some multi-sampled hits, mainly kicks and snares, and we're going to tell the side chaining compressor to listen to them. And what this means is that instead of the compressor acting normally using its threshold and attack and release and ratio, what this is going to do is it's going to react instead to the audio material that's being fed into it from the beats. Normally when you add a compressor onto a track, it's reacting to the audio material coming from the track that it's on. So in this case, if we did not have side chaining on, it would be reacting to our bass line. But because we activate side chaining, the compressor is instead going to be listening to and reacting to our beats track. And the idea is that we want every time a kick and a snare hit, we want those to be ducking or reducing the volume of our bass line. That way they're not actually occupying the same frequency range at the same time, they're alternating. And this is a great automated way of doing this. So we've got it listening to our beats. The very next thing we want to do is we want to drag the threshold down. And what this will do is it means the threshold is going to allow the compressor to clamp down harder. So we're just going to listen again and I want you to watch and listen and just check out how this sounds. <laughs> This area right here is important to look at, the gain reduction area. This is telling us how much ducking or how much compression that we're getting. And you can see and hear that it's starting to move the baseline out of the way of the kick and snare. Now, I'm going to update a couple of settings here. I don't leave the settings as default. First of all, I found the model down here, FF1, to be more effective for side chaining. I do find some artifacts sometimes come through, some pops and some clicks on FF2. Uh, they, they are still there oftentimes on FF1, but FF1 is a lot better. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my ratio. And I want the ratio to be really hard here because I more or less want it to be almost silencing the bass line when the kick and the snare hit because I, I want them to be really heavy and punch through the mix. And next I'm going to adjust my attack and release time so that they're very, 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 very short. Okay, now I'm going to take my threshold down a little more and we're going to watch the gain reduction. <laughs> Now, in order to best hear what this sounds like, you're going to want to solo the bass. So I'm just going to move over here, solo the bass, and let you listen to it with the side chaining compressor active. So you can hear that whenever the kick drum and snare are hitting, the side chaining compressor is reducing the volume. Let's solo the bass and leave the side chaining compressor deactivated so you can hear it without the side chaining compressor acting on it.
And then I'm gonna activate it again so you can hear what they sound like in an A-B kind of environment. So you can definitely hear the impact that this is making, and you can feel free to play around with your settings here. Now, the the reason why this uh, works so well is, uh, in this case, uh, I have heavy, heavy bass, and I have a pretty heavy kick drum and snare. In different types of music, you may want to use this technique slightly differently, but this works best in super bass heavy music where the sub and the bass are playing at the same time as the kick. Now, in this case, I've chosen to sidechain to the kick and the snare, because in this style of music, this is, uh, you know, I write a lot of glitch hop and dubstep, and the snare happens to be very, very heavy. There's quite a bit of weight and bass in the snare as well. So I sidechain to both of them, because I want both the kick and the snare to punch through my bass. Now, let's say, for example, you didn't want to do that, and you just wanted to sidechain to the kick, like in a lot of house music, you would only sidechain to the kick. You can do this because I'm using a drum rack here. You can sidechain to various different sources within the drum rack. So if we go here, and we've selected beats, we can go in this menu here and you see we have a whole bunch of choices. I could, for example, sidechain just to my kicks. And you can go pre and post effects, post mixer. I'm just going to go drum rack kicks, pre effects, and you'll be able to see now that it's just going to respond to the kick drum in my drum track. Now there's another very useful aspect of our sidechaining compressor, which is the EQ area. So say, for example, I wasn't using a drum rack. Drum racks are, are a great way to write percussion, but say I was using a drum loop, or instead I was using uh, audio tracks and they were all bussed up through a group track, but I wanted to isolate just the kick drum. Well, unless you're using a drum rack, uh, it's more difficult to do this. So if I was using a, a loop, the kick would be in there mixed in with the hats and the snares and everything else. But say I wanted to just isolate the kick. You can do that with the EQ function here. So what this does is it EQs the input signal on the side chain. So if we activate it here, and we now tell it instead to listen to everything from our drum rack, we're going to get everything in there. And we can just isolate the kick using the EQ. So first thing we want to do is let's just deactivate our beats, deactivate our hat so we can just hear what's acting on the bass. And if we dial this in by pressing the preview icon, what we can do is we have a bunch of different EQ settings. If I just want the kick, I'm going to I'm going to low pass everything here. So I'm just hearing the low end and I can play the track. Now we're watching the gain reduction meter because we want it not reacting to the snares or anything else. We just want it reacting to the kick. So I'm going to dial down the frequency until it's just reacting to the kick. And we can see we're getting just a tiny, tiny little bit of gain reduction from our snares, but we're dialing most of it in from the kick. Now, if we deactivate this, we'll be able to hear our bass. So that is ducking using sidechaining compression in Ableton Live. I'm Vespers, I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer, and hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Catch you next time.